good morning everyone so in the earlier classes we discussed about various linear measurement equipment as well as the line standards and end standards so today we are going to discuss one more thing that is slip wages in the earlier classes we discussed about the steel rules vernier calibers micrometers etc those are for linear measurements today we are going to learn one more thing that is slip wages so these are the slip wages so slip wages are metallic blocks so here those are the n number of blocks so we are having various sets of blocks so depends upon the required length we are going to add number of blocks so here this is this block is having 2 mm this is 3 mm this is 4 mm so if you want a some dimension we need to add this 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 so we need to add the required blocks together so that we are getting a required length so that's the application of slip wages So if the slip blocks, this is the line diagram of slip blocks. So every set is having n number of slip wages. So each number is marked on the slip block itself. So this is having one and one point zero zero one, one point zero zero two. Similarly, there are with some dimensions and it means with some thickness there are n number of blocks. So here the single one, this one is block, block, block. So so depends upon the application we are going to use these blocks. So each block is having their individual dimension. So the, like this, this is having 70 mm dimension. So similarly, it is having 80, 90. So depends upon the application. If we want, so 170 mm length. So at that condition, we need to join these two together. So that 90 plus 80, that equal to 170. So that we can get 170 mm. Similarly, depends upon the application. Depends upon the required length. We are going to add various number of slip wages. So these are the slip wages. Slip wages usually accepted in standards. So we already discussed that there are two types of standards. That is line standard and end standard. So if we are measuring the me or if we are taking the measurement between two lines, so between two marked lines, then that is called as line standard. So whereas if we are taking the measurement between two parallel surfaces, so here if it is a block, we are taking the dimension from this face to this face. Then that comes under end standard. So similarly, now the slip wages are end standards. So we are going to take the measurement from one face to the other face. So it means we are taking the dimension from two parallel surfaces. So if we are taking or if we are considering two parallel surfaces for measurement, then that comes under end standards. So now slip wages one of our end standard measurement. So it's a universally accepted end standard of length. So it's a rectangular block. So here is the rectangular block made up of high grade hardened steel. So it's made up of hardened steel. So this is the block. It is having it's a cuboid shape. It is having three dimensions. That is L width as well as its distance. So here this D and W are constant. L will vary. So here these are having n number of blocks. In this L is only the variable. So remaining D and W are constants. So we are having n number of lengths. So depends upon the application, we are going to join those n number of slip wages. So now slip wages, those are independent of any subsequent variation or shape. So it is made up of hardened steel. The expansion as well as the dimensional stability is very good for this steel. Carefully finished by high graded lapping process. So you already learned about hand lapping process as well as machine lapping process. So by means of lapping process, we prepare this surface with high degree of finish, flatness, and accuracy. So compared to rectangular blocks, these surface, these slip wages are having good surface finish, and those are highly, those are made up of hardened steel, and those are having high hardness and high surface finish. So. Here, the opposite faces. So, as we know that the slip wages consists of six faces. So, the opposite faces are such of a high degree of surface finish. So, among the six faces, only two faces, face one and the bottom face two, only two faces are highly finished. So, the remaining four planes, remaining four sets are normal. So, among the six planes, only two are highly surfaced one. So, the opposite faces are of such a high degree of surface finish so it is made up of hardened alloy steel having a dimension of 
30 by 10 mm. So we already discussed that among the three dimensions, two are constant. So this is 10 and this is 30. Constant. This length, this L will vary. So that might be from 1 to M. So it is around 100. So that depends upon the set of blocks. So some set of blocks are having 45 blocks, some are having 87, some are having 105. So it depends. So there are various types of standards. So we will discuss it in the earlier classes. So among these three dimensions, two dimensions, it means D and W are constant. That is 30 by 10 mm. So this 30 and this 10 are constant. Only the length will vary. So here, so it is made up of hardened alloy steel having a 30 by 10 mm cross section. Next, steel is preferred as a material since it is economical and it has the same coefficient of same coefficient of expansion. So throughout the composite, it is a component. It is having same coefficient of expansion. Along with that, so most of the engineering components are made up of steel. So I am using the regular component as a steel, and now I am using slipage also steel. So if my component so with respect to temperature, if my component expands, my slip area also expands similar to that. So that if both are steel, so this also expanding and this also expanding. So that no dimensional variation will take place. So if it is uh, having a different coefficient of expansion and slip areas are having different coefficient of expansion. So then slip areas will not expand, but our material will expand. It means compound will expand. Then there will be a dimensional variation. So to avoid that, so many of the engineering compounds are made up of steel due to structural requirement. So due to that, our slip areas are also made up of steel. So that the thermal coefficient is uniform for both the components so that we can get accurate dimensions. So hardening is required to make the slip areas resistant to wear. So as we discussed that our slip blocks are N standards. So N standards means, so these face, so two opposite face are, take, are only two opposite faces are used for measurement. So during the operation or during the measuring process, the surfaces might wear. So it may expand to wear into operation. So due to that, the component should have high wear resistance. If it is having high wear resistance, then the component dimension will not wear. So if it is not wear, then the life of the component is high. So to improve the life of the component, the wear resistance of the slip gauges are high. So hardening, for that purpose we, re, we did a process called hardening. Hardening is required to make the slip gauges resistant to wear. So next, hardening, the hardening process, heat removal process. The hardening process is followed by stabilizing at sub-zero level, at sub-zero temperature. So as we know that, so uh, the some, so after machining, so the components will have some internal stresses. So to relieve the stresses, we are doing this stabilizing process at sub-zero temperature. So at sub-zero temperature, the stresses are relieving during the heat treatment process. Next, the heat treatment process is followed by finishing the measuring phases. So we already discussed that our slip gauges consists of six phases. Among the six phases, only two phases are measuring phases. Those are highly surfaced finish, highly surfaced. So it is followed by finishing the measuring phases. So here we are finishing only those two phases. So the rest of the phases are normal. So compared to other four phases, these two phases are having high surface finish. So finishing the surface phases to a high degree of accuracy, flatness and surface finish. So two surfaces, the opposite two phases should be highly flat, right? Because if those are not flat, it means if they are having irregular. So then the dimension at this cross section is not equal to the dimension at this cross section. So if we consider this as a one cross section and two cross sections. So the dimension, so it means the linear measurement, the length. So the linear measurement at cross section one does not equal to the cross section two. So to avoid this, our two surfaces should be flat. The top surface as well as bottom surface are flat. So that the cross section or the dimension at any instant should be equal. So then only we can get accurate results. Next, the height of slip cages is engraved on the rectangular phases. 
is engraved. So as we discussed that the length is varying. So this length or the height, the height of this ribcage is marked on one of the face. So for example here it is marked as 5. So this is one length. So similarly the length of the block is marked on one of its surface. Those are engraved. The height of a slip cage is engraved on one of the rectangular faces, which also features a symbol to indicate the two measuring planes. So, as we know that we are having only two measuring planes to indicate those two planes, we are marking the length as well as the symbol also. So, next, slip gauges. So, several slip gauges are combined together temporarily to provide the end standard of a specific length. So to obtain a certain length, we are joining, it means we are combining number of slip cages. By this image you can observe that number of slip cages, this is the slip gauge set. So from this set, we picked some standards. So it depends upon the requirement, depends upon the final length. We need to add some measurements, some standards. So those standards are picked out and those are combined together. If all the blocks are combined, it means the required blocks are combined, then the combination should be like this. So all the components, all the blocks are joined together. So here, in order to achieve this, individual gauges must be available in dimension. So for example, if, if I want a 15 mm dimension, so individual, so for joining, I need 10 plus 2 plus 3. So 10 plus 2 plus 3 that equal to 15. So for attaining this 15, I, the block, our set should contains of this 10, 2 and 3. If not, then we will adjust that 15 to the available sets. So in, instead of this 10, so instead of this 2 plus 3, I can make it as 5. Or 10, if 10 is not available, then I can go for 9 plus 6. So similarly, we need to maintain that length, the final length by means of the available gauges. So next, in order to achieve this, individual gauges must be available. In order to achieve this, individual gauges must be available. The required gauges, our combination should be available. If not, we will change the combo combination to get the required length. In dimension needed to issue any combination within the available number of gauges. So only a limited number of gauges are available in this set. So based upon this availability, we need to make the combination to get the required length. So the surfaces of the surfaces of neighboring slip gauges should be stick so close together that there should be no any scope of even a layer of A. So here we are going to join two slip gauges so that while joining no A should be entrapped between these gauges. So we need to make sure that so even scope for even a layer of A to be trapped to be trapped between them that means the sense between the two blocks between the two blocks no A should be entrapped which can add error to the final ring. So if there are uh, so here, if we are going to join 5 slip gauges, 2, 3, 4, 5. So for example, if everyone is having 2 mm dimension, so that the final length should be 10 mm. If there is an A gap between this 2 to 2, between 1 slip to 1 slip, so there may be minute amount of dimension will be added. So that if here we are adding n number of gauges, so n number of A gaps will lead to some else dimension other than 10. So due to that we are getting n above. So to avoid those air gaps, we need to do proper procedure that is called bringing. So we will discuss it in the earlier steps. So for this to happen, there should be absolute control over the form. So it means over the shape. So our uh, component, the shape of this slip gauge should be uniform. So it should be very good. It means absolute control over the form means shape of the slip gauges, flatness of the slip gauge, parallelism of slip gauges and surface finish and dimensional stability of the material. So the selected slip gauges should be 
with a good control of its surface finish, its flatness, parallelism, and dimensional stability. So, if all these conditions are well are satisfied, then only we can get accurate dimension. So, if not, so if the compound are having irregular dimension, then the output will also be varied. So, we are not going to get good accuracy. So, metals of homogeneity of the surface gauges. So, while bundling, so bundling in the sense when combining, while combining slip gauges to the required height. So, required height or length. So, it depends upon the requirement. So, required length. The surfaces slip gauges are pressed, are pressed into contact by impacting a small twisting. So, the two blocks, so imagine these two or two blocks, we need to press with some twisting. So, with some rotation, we need to join or combine those two blocks. The slip gauges are held together, are held together due to the molecular adhesion. So, it is very important due to its molecular adhesion between the mating surfaces. This phenomena is called bringing. So, as we know that we need to join two slip cages and during this combination, the air should not be entrapped between these slip cages. So, to avoid the air entrapment, air entrapment, we are doing an unique process that is called bringing. So, here bringing is the process to join two slip cages to avoid the air gap or to avoid the air entrapment between the slip cages. So, now we will see about this bringing procedure. So, procedure for bringing. So, a clean, clean the slip gauges using lint free, free cloth. So, the slip gauges, so any dust on the slip gauges should be wiped off by means of a lint free cloth. So, the surfaces may be contaminated. So, the number of slip gauges, the air dust or some atoms, micro dust will be entrapped on the surface of the slip gauges. We need to wipe that in uh, that dust or foreign particles from the surfaces by means of a lint free cloth. Next, one slip cage is then oscillate slightly. So, here these are the two slip cages. So, let us consider the one first slip cage is A and the second slip cage is B. We need to join two slip cages. So, ultimately after joining, after ringing, we are going to get like this. So, here imagine this is a A block and this is B block. We, we need to join two blocks. So, here on the two blocks, the two blocks, one block should be placed on the top of the other and that should be oscillated slightly. So, one slip gauge is then oscillate slightly over other gauge with light pressure. Oscillation should be done with light pressure. So, here this is the A and this is B. The B should oscillate on the surface of A with light pressure. Next, one gauge is then placed at at 90 degrees to the other. So here, now these are in a, these are at 190 degrees to each other. So this, the block, the other block should be placed at 90 degrees to other by means of light pressure and then twisting, it means rotation. Rotate until the blocks are brought in one line. So here, these two blocks are perpendicular to each other. Now, we are twisting, it means we are rotating the B block so, the 90 degrees should be aligned to 0 degrees. So, here we are twisting the block and we are making that align in a single line. Block in one line. So, this procedure. So, by means of this procedure, the air entrapment will be avoided. So, the if here we are joining the two gauges by means of a unique procedure called bringing. In this bringing, the opposite, one block should be placed perpendicular to each other and, should, and it should oscillate on the other, after that, the component should be rotated, it means tilted or twisted to 0 degree centigrade, so that the two blocks should be on a single line, it should be on one line. So, bringing occurs due to molecular addition between a liquid film and the mating surfaces. So, the between these two mating surfaces, Due to molecular adhesion, the, the two blocks are in contact with each other. This ringing process is used to build up desired dimension. So, build up desired 
desired dimensions it means the required length or height over a range of over a range of sizes in specific increments with specific increment so here if we consider that so the blocks so if we clearly observe that the length of the blocks are reducing so that in an in an incremental pattern we are adding the blocks so one block should be bigger smaller bigger smaller randomly we are not joining it should be an incremental way so the bringing procedure is used to build up the that dimension over a range of sizes in specified increments next the success of of bringing operation the success of bringing operation depends upon the surface finish it depends upon various factors those factors are surface finish and flatness of the blocks used and the options of so here the surfaces should be dust free it means it should be no dirty dust should not be there and grease buds and scratches so our surface should be having our surface should have high surface finish so then only the two blocks should bring together in a good manner if not then the two blocks will be separated very easily so if the blocks are bringed properly bringed then without the holding the all box the jaw will be retained together if those if the blocks are not properly wrung then the bonding should not be like this and it should be separated if we cannot hold all the blocks together those will be separated if we done if we did a proper wrung then only the blocks should appear like this so applications of slippages so these are used to check the accuracy of pernier calibers micrometers and other measuring devices so as we know that micrometers are so our micrometers are used to identify the dimension so it might be outer dimension or inner dimension so by means of micrometer we are getting the outer diameter of the component so here we are calibrating the devices the micrometer whether the micrometer reading is correct or not that is working properly or not so for verification of those micrometers we are going to use this slip gauges by means of this end slips end standard slip gauges we are comparing the standard it means we are calibrating those micrometers vernier calibers and some other linear measurement devices they are used to set the comparator so we will discuss the comparators so we are having two types of instruments that is measuring instruments as well as comparing instruments so in the earlier classes we discuss about those comparators so these are used to set the comparator to a specific dimension next they are used for direct precise measurement they are used for direct precise precise measurement where the accuracy of the work piece is important accuracy so for getting higher accuracy we need to use this slip gauges next they are frequently used with with sign bar to measure angle of work piece so sign bar is used for identifying the angles so for that sign bar we are going to use this slip gauges as accessories of this sign bar they can be used to check gaps between parallel location so if there are parallel location so for identifying the gap so we need to place those slip blocks here so that the, the length the gap can be identified by means of the thickness of the slip blocks so next classification okay, classification of slip gauges slip gauges are classified into five types so depends upon its application so the, depends upon the location where we are going to use these slip gauges those are classified into five types those are grade 2 grade 1 calibration grade grade 0 and grade 00, zero. so in detail we will discuss about these grades so grade 2 so commonly used grade this is a workshop grade so all the components all the workers are going to use this workshop grade so this is grade 2 this is the workshop grade typically uses including setting of the machine tools positioning of milling cutters and checking the mechanical width so as we know that milling is used to uh, to produce the slots for making the slot or to align those cutting tools we are going to use this slip gauges similarly next one is grade 1 so used for more precise work it means in tool room 
so for setting up the tools it means for making the angles or the thickness of the of uh, the tool tips so for preparing tool tips for aligning tool tips for brazing and all we are going to use this grade one type of slip gauges it is used for more precise work it means in tool room so typically users include setting up sign bars sign tables checking the gaps next setting dial indicators to zero so these are the grade one this is used in tool room operations next calibration grade so calibration grade calibration grade are used for calibration of slip gauges and other measuring instruments so in grade 1 we are using some slip gauges grade 2 and grade 1 those slip gauges can be calibrated by means of this calibrate grades as well as these calibrate grades are used to calibrate the other instruments other measuring instruments like vernier calibers micrometers etc next grade 0 this is more commonly an inspection grade. So in, this is more commonly known as inspection grade. So inspection department only have access to this grade of slip gauges. So these are used for highly, these are used for inspection procedure. So next grade zero. So this grade would be kept in the standard room and would be kept for work for the highest precision works. So by means of grade one, we are getting a, highest grade uh, high grade quality but we not to get more accuracy or more precise than those work we are going to use this grade zero zero these are used for determining area any errors in workshop grades so in the earlier slide we discussed about the two grades that is grade two and grade one those two can also be ca calibrated it means the errors can be identified by means of this grade zero calibrated uh, grade zero slip gauges So next sets. So as we discussed that our set contains a number of slip ball, slip blocks. So as per standards, there are various standards. That is M45 was, is one of the standard set. That is metric 45 in this set. So in this set, it consists of only 45 blocks. As per the standard M45, this set consists of only 45 blocks. So that includes 1.001 mm to 1.009. So it means similar. So for an incremental step of 0.001, it consists of 9 blocks. It means 1.001, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So these are the 9 blocks available in this set. So next 1.001 to 1.009 with an increment of 0.001. Sorry, 0 0.01. It means 1.01, 1.02, 1.03 like that it, till 1.09 we are having 9 pieces next 1.1 to 1.9 with an increment of 0 0.1 it means 1.1 1.2 1.3 1.4 1.5 like this till 1.9 again this can this series consists of 9 blocks next 1 to 9 with an increment of 1 it means 1 2 3 4 5 like that only even numbers 9 blocks and 10 to 90 so with an incremental of 10 it means 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 so 9 boxes total a set of 45 blocks so if we want to make any dimension we need to use only these 45 blocks so and these 45 blocks are having only one it means only it consists of two number of slip gauge it is only one slip gauge so with this send to make a required length, we cannot use the dimension of two twice. Why? Because we have only one set of blocks. It means it is having only one one piece having a dimension of two mm. So if we want four mm, if we want four mm, we cannot use two plus two. Why? Because we are having only two. So for this purpose, we can use three plus one. So that. If the blocks are not available, we will we will need to check with an alternate to get the required dimension. So to overcome some difficulties, so the next set is M87, that is metric 87 blocks. This set consists of 87 blocks. 
similar to earlier cases earlier uh, set 45 this is having 1.0012 to 1.009 with an increment of 0.001 so like earlier 1.001 1.002 1.003 1.004 1 like that 1.009 so it is having a total of 9 blocks next similar to 1.01 1.02 1.03 like that it is having 49 blocks so 1.47 1.54 Sorry, till 1.49 we are having 49 blocks. Next, 1.5 to 9.5 with an increment of 0 0.5. It means 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5. 5. Like that, those are having 19 blocks. Those are having 19 blocks. Next, 10 to 90. So, with an increment of 10, it means 10, 20, 30, 40. Like that, we are having a 9 blocks and one additional block that is 1.0005. So, here it is only 3 decimals, here it is 4. So, additionally, it is having 1.0005, it is only one block. So, with a set of total 87 blocks, we are having one more set that is called M87, that is metric 87. So, similarly, so there are having various sets that is metric 57. So here it is, those are having again in a set of pieces. Next, English 81. So with some increments, those are having 9, 49, 9, 4 various pieces. So next, along with this, they are having two protecting blocks. So as we discussed that, the ringing is the procedure for, uh, for attaining a required or specified length. So after getting the specified length, we are going to use this specified length by means of slip gauges or some XYZ procedures. So during this operation, the top as well as bottom surfaces are exposed to wear. So why? Because those two surfaces are widely used for measurement or some precise working or some working procedure. So during this operation, the two surfaces might be exposed to wear. So to avoid the wearing of slip blocks, we are protecting, we are adding two blocks. By means of these two blocks, we are protecting the surface finish of the upper and lower surface of the blocks. So for protecting the regular slip gauges, we are adding two blocks. Those two blocks are called protecting blocks. So by means of these protecting blocks, we are protecting our slip gauges from wear as well as to a reduction of surface finish. So the protein, another two gauges, another two gauges are re-added which are made extra wear resistant to reduce wear during inspection. So to reduce the inspection, uh, to reduce the wear of the components during inspection or during working, two additional blocks are, are added. Those two blocks are called protecting blocks. They are called protecting gauge blocks, usually having dimension of, those protecting blocks are available with a dimension of 1 mm, 1.5 mm, 2 mm or 2.5 mm. So depends upon the application, we can take any two blocks having same dimension. So here all are having two blocks. So in the earlier set it is only one. Here the set consists of two 1 mm blocks, two 1.5 mm, two 2 mm, two 2.5 mm blocks. So these are the protecting gauges. On both sides we are going to place two additional blocks. So two, for each dimension, two blocks are available. Depends upon the requirement, we can use any set. They are marked with the letter P on its measuring surfaces. So in earlier slides, we discussed that the measurement will be marked. It means the length will be marked on one of these faces or one of the surface of slip gauges. Here, the protecting blocks are indicated with P. So instead of dimension, those are indicated with a letter called P that is indicating the protecting blocks. Next one, selection of selection and building of blocks. So till now we discussed that the blocks are to be selected and those are to be run. So for selection we are having a unique procedure that is to build up the blocks to the required length we need to follow the steps. That is, note down the required dimension. First, 
we need to note down the required dimension. What is the dimension? For example, we need to identify 13.758. The required dimension. That is, I am changing that one. 14.519. The required dimension is 14.519. Next, detect from, from it the size of two protecting blocks. So, if we are using any protecting blocks, then we need to detect. So, if we are using 1 mm blocks, 1 mm protecting block. So, these are the regular slip gauges. On the top of the slip gauge, on the top and bottom of the slip gauge, I am going to add one slip gauge on either sides. So, these two yellow blocks are protecting blocks. So, if we are using these protecting blocks, then we need to subtract this dimension of the protecting block from the main dimension. If this is 1 mm and this is 1 mm, we need to reduce 2 mm from this, from the main dimension. It is 14.519 minus 2 mm, that is 12.519. 12.519. Next, add block that eliminates least, add blocks that eliminates the least digit of the number. So, among this number, the least number is 9. The last decimal, that is 9. So, we need to remove the last decimal first. So, that is 9.009. Continue till you reach 0. So, always start with the last decimal place. So in the years 1, we started with the last one, 9. So always start with the last decimal place. Next. Then take the subsequent decimal places. Then take then the subsequent, the earlier one, the earlier one, the earlier one should be taken the next in the next step. Minimum number of slip gauges, the important one. Minimum number of slip gauges should be used by selecting the largest possible block in each step. So minimum number of slip gauges. So for example, I need to make a combination of 10. So this 10 can be achieved with 7 plus 3. That can also be achieved with 5 plus 3 plus 2. So here 5 plus 3 plus 2 that equal to 10 and 7 plus 3 also 10. So if here we need to select only this one. Why? Because here we are using 2 blocks whereas here we are using 3 blocks. Our condition is to use minimum number of blocks. So here we are using only two. So we need to consider only this one as correct procedure. So for selecting the blocks, the number of blocks, the combination of blocks should be minimum. So for attaining the required dimension, we need to achieve a minimum number of slip gauges only. Minimum number of slip gauges should be used by selecting the largest possible block on each step. Next, in this case, if in case pro, in if in case protector slips are used, first direct their thickness from the required dimension and then proceed per above order. So protecting blocks can be used or cannot be. That depends upon the accuracy as well as the measurement. We can use or we cannot. So, if we are using those protecting blocks, we need to direct the thickness of the protecting blocks from the main value. If not, then follow this procedure. If we are protecting blocks, then we need to follow this one. So, one example. A dimension of 29.758 29.758 mm is required to be set with the help of slip cages as accurately as possible. Use M87 set slip gauges. Identify the slips to run. So here we need to identify the combination. So what are the slip gauges to be run in 87 set to attain or to get the required dimension. So now we will see the procedure. So actually the original size, the required dimension 29.758. 29.758 is our dimension. First step. Our first step is to eliminate the last dimension. The least dimension. It means 0 0.008 is our least dimension. So here the last decimal place that is 0 0.008. For that I am choosing 1.008 mm slip gauge. 
so here 1.01 1.001 to 1.009 so among these blocks, I am selecting 1.008. So 1.008 mm slip gauge. Therefore, remainder. So actual value 29.758 minus 1.008. That equal to 28.75. Now we need to identify for the remaining 28.75. So for the second decimal place, it means that is 0 0.05. Sorry. Here it is 0 0.05. The decimal place of 0 0.05. We are choosing 1.25. So in the earlier step we discussed that for attaining the last decimal we need to identify the bigger one, the maximum slip gauge among this slip. I am identifying it with for the second decimal value. For the second decimal value we are having the maximum as 1.25. 1.25 mm. So for remainder 28.75 minus 1.25 that equal to 27.5 mm. Now select 7.5 and 20 mm strip gauges. For attaining 27.5 mm, we have chosen 7.5 and 20 mm. So finally for 29.758, the combination is 20 plus 7.5 plus 1.25 plus 1.008. By means of this combination, we are getting the required dimension 29.758. This is the procedure for setting of slip gauges. Next, one more example. So, this is the slip gauges. So, the summary of the session. Now, the summary of the session. So slip gauges are end standards. They are end standards. So that is one of the linear measurement devices or instruments. These are the end standard type of instruments. So these are used to identify the angles as well as lengths also. So here the slip gauges are having uh, slip gauges are a set of blocks, a rectangular blocks having a various dimension. So to attain a required dimension, we need to join a number of slip gauges together. The, very, the slip gauges, the joining of this, these slip gauges are called bringing. So the, we are following a unique procedure called bringing. It means joining of two blocks. By here, by joining of two blocks, we are removing, we are wiping off the air, entrapment of air between the blocks. For that we are following a procedure called bringing. In bringing we need to place the blocks opposite to each other and we need to oscillate the block. After that the 90 degrees block should be rotated or tilted to attain on a single line. So that the two blocks are brung together we are getting a combined, a combined length. So by following this procedure the length so the air gap the air between the two slips are avoided. By means of this we are getting a good accurate component the dimension the combined dimension so the the combined dimension of individual is together the combined dimension sorry the dimension of individual box is the combined dimension so for, by means of this bringing we are getting an exact combined dimension without any errors so after that for selecting of these blocks we need to follow a procedure that is first we need to eliminate the last or the minimum values it means if it is having a decimal values first we need to eliminate the last decimal value and then further we need to reduce one by one so along with this so to reduce or to protect the slip gauges from wear and tear we are having additional blocks those are called protecting blocks those two protecting blocks can be added on top and bottom of our combined slip gauges these are the slip gauges thank you